All right. So your first neuron, the preganglionic, in the sympathetic pathway is going to be here in the lateral horn. Its axon is going to head out this way. And I don't care. Just say lateral horn and then say ventral root. That's the next thing you need to say. You don't need to say ventral horn. You can if you want, but um, what we see outside, you know, in anatomy class, what we see outside of the central nervous system is the ventral root. And it comes over to join the dorsal root and become the spinal nerve. So this axon is traveling along in the spinal nerve for just a brief moment before that nerve splits into the dorsal and ventral rami. It continues just for a little ways into the ventral ramus. And then it's going to go into the white ramus, which is only just a wee little thing. It's almost microscopic. I mean, you can see it, but um, anyway, that's just only for the sympathetic nervous system. So then this nerve is going to come up into one of the ganglia and the chain ganglia. And we're just going to do this most simple method, uh, this most simple route where it synapses immediately. So it enters through the white ramus into the sympathetic chain. So let me just throw this out there too. It's the sympathetic chain ganglia. That's the same thing as the sympathetic trunk, which is the same thing as paravertebral ganglia. So I'll say this is a paravertebral ganglia. So that's the first, that's the extent of the first neuron and its axon, the preganglionic. This and the ganglion is where the postganglionic neuron lives. Got a big orange dot there for that. And that is going to exit via the gray rami. And at this point, um, it may just then go out and follow, continue to follow this nerve out to whatever the target organ is. We're just gonna say, this is what people have been asking about, are going out to the skin and sweat glands. So color for a sweat gland, how about the, uh, uh, Blue, blue sweat. So can I draw a sweat gland? I usually just draw like a curly Q kind of thing like that. Just say that's your sweat gland. So we're gonna follow, you know, you have nerves going out to the skin and you're gonna have some of these uh, sympathetic postganglionic axons following along with those nerves that are going out that way. So that's what autonomic nerves do. They follow the infrastructure that is already laid down. So you have these tiny little axons following along the big ones that are somatosensory or motor, and they're just following on those nerves. Or sometimes they follow along blood vessels. We'll learn more and more about that. Another thing that can happen is that instead of going straight out this ventral ramus, you could have one. Let's just draw another one. Assume there's another path going right here. And it goes out the gray ramus. And it's going to backtrack a little bit and then go out the dorsal ramus if it's going to the back. You'll have the same thing here. You know, we're going to a little sweat gland out there. And so we're going to send up on that sweat gland. And so that's how it works. So we've got the um, lateral horn and the spinal cord here, T1 to L2 somewhere. We're heading out the ventral root, merges with that one to become the spinal nerve. Then we split the rami. You got a ventral ramus and a dorsal ramus. That's this is just you know all spinal nerves split into a dorsal and ventral ramus. Uh, between T1 and L2, these ventral rami are also going to have a white ramus communicating over to the sympathetic trunk. The, that means the, to the sympathetic ganglia, the chain of ganglia there. So we're just showing one ganglion here where there's a synapse occurring with the postganglionic neuron, which then goes out via the gray ramus back to the spinal nerve, and it's either going to go out the ventral ramus or the dorsal ramus to its target organ. That is one possibility for how this goes. You can look at the other possibilities. There are two very similar ones where we uh, come in and we ascend or descend in the chain and then synapse, and the second heads out. And then there's another one altogether that calls for different art and different drawing. But I want you to get this one down first before you even consider the other ones. I want you to be able to draw the simple one, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna get it all confused, or some of you, the ones that are gonna come and ask me questions, are gonna get it all confused. So just do the simple one before you jump into the next level.